Hello everyone, my name is DevTech and uh, today we're going to do something different. Uh, normally I do gaming videos, but today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to set up a server. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial, so um, let's get to it. Um, in this video, we will be um, learning a couple of things. Things that we will be learning is how to set up a Arma 3 server, how to make that server automatically restart if it crashes, and how to get the server settings working. Because some people do complain that uh, they've done some weird trick stuff to get the server working and then they can't get the server.cfg to work properly. So we're going to be looking at that in a little bit more detail. Um, we'll also briefly go over how to use Steam CMD for those who are not acquainted with Steam CMD uh, in order to download the server. And if you're having port forwarding issues, you can watch that video. You can click on the uh, annotation, it will send you there to my other tutorial about port forwarding. As well as if you want to customize your uh, command prompt appearance so that it looks a bit nicer, uh, there's a video for that too. Right, and let's get started. First off, let's download Steam CMD because you may or may not have it yet. So go into Google and type in Steam CMD, and it should send you to this page here, which is a, a web page called developer.valvesoftware.com. Uh, there will be a big index here you want to click on whichever system is appropriate for you to download. I'll click Windows because I'm Windows. You download it, uh, extract the zip file into a folder of its own, and uh, launch it. You can just double click the XE. It'll download extra files it may or may not need, and um, then that is done. Um, next up, let's uh, see how to download a server. Now, if you want to download a server, we're going to need to do a couple of things. You'll need to log into your Steam account, um, which will entail your actual Steam login and your actual Steam password, uh, because you are logging to Steam itself, and it needs to verify that you exist. You might have to check with Steam Guard in order to make sure that your computer or the computer you're trying to install it on is authorized to use your Steam account, else it will give an error. Just saying. Um, so, in order to log in, you can open Steam CMD and, you know, I'll do this with you guys. Uh, we can go here into Steam CMD and launch it. And it'll do some stuff that is basically checking for updates and downloading updates if they are necessary. It may not be necessary, but, um, yeah. We'll have to wait for that a while. It takes a little while, even for me, even though I've got the thing pretty much definitely up to date. Uh, right, once it's loaded, it'll look like this. It'll look a bit like command prompt normally does, except it will say Steam and have a little is bigger than, or is it is smaller than, I don't even know, one of the two. <laughs> and we'll have this, right. So what we want to do here, keep the other page in, is we want to log in. You can log in as anonymous, which means you won't have to give in your Steam information. But do bear in mind that not all servers allow you to uh, use the anonymous account to log in and download. So you may need to log in with your own account. And if you do log in with your own account, it'll kick you off of Steam. Just saying. So you might want to do login anonymous, or you may want to log in with your password and your username as such. You press enter and it'll log you in. It'll pr basically kick you off of Steam, uh, which is fine. Don't worry about that. Just let it happen. Uh, once logged in, you're going to need to set up where it'll download the server to. Now, hopefully, you'll already have created a folder in Steam CMD called, huh, well, uh, in this case, Arma 3 or ser uh, Arma 3 server or something like that. And you can set the directory to install to by doing force install directory dot slash, let's say uh, Arma 3 server slash. 
<laughs> and uh, that will set the installing directory so you can download directly into that folder and everything will be secluded from the Steam CMD files because you don't always want those to be combined. And the next thing is the downloading function that we need in order to download the stuff. So we want to do app update app ID. Now, normally you'll have to look this up. I'm not going to go into it too much, but I have here a notepad file which tells me exactly what the app ID is because I my installation system that I made for installing servers automatically records what I type in for this. So I can keep it uh, noted down. Anyway, you need to type down app update uh, 233780 space dash beta. Now, despite being called beta, this is actually to download the actual server files, not any beta files, because for some reason beta, if you do dash beta space dev, it'll download the beta build. I don't know why they did it like this. Normally, it's not like that. That's why I said this is just in this case. And there's one more ingredient missing. You want to add valid validate. Uh, why you want to add validate? Validate basically ensures that it checks whether the server is already installed. This allows you to update. Um, if your server is out of date and it says, oh, your server is out of date, you run the command exactly like this once more uh, with validate on, and it will check whether the server is up to date or not. Else, you can also run it like this, and it will check, and it will not re-download the entire server again because the server's out of date. So it's basically kind of a, a guarantee that you don't end up re-downloading the server every month or so. So once you've done that, press enter, it'll start downloading. I'm not going to show what that looks like because I already have it downloaded and do not wish to go through that process again. Now what we end up with here, I'll show you in a second. What we end up with is uh, servers Arma 3 is this folder here. You will have everything from add-ons to MP missions and then Steam apps. You will have the server itself, all of the DLLs should be there, and that's pretty much it. Now you see I've left three things out. The things I've left out is the server profile folder, which you have to create yourself, and I will teach you what you need to put in there in a second. The app ID.txt, which is not something you need, it's something I added manually, like I said before, that contains the app ID to download the update. And the run underscore server dot bat, which is basically your protection system in case your server crashes. So let's go look into all of that for a moment. First off, we need to create the server profile. Now you can call this folder whatever you want. You can call it something short and sweet, or you can call it what it is. I like calling it what it is, server profile, so I'm going to put that there. Once you've created that, create an empty text file and call it config underscore server dot cfg. You can change these names completely to what you want. It does not matter. The contents does matter, however. So um, let's go into this file here for a second. Now, I'm not going to go and read out every single thing in here because there's a lot of stuff in here uh, but the information contained within this file will be downloadable from my comments section not comment section uh, the, the description below on the video so you can download this file I'll go over I mean you, you can see I've added a lot of detail to the uh, list so that it will tell you what everything does in its own way hopefully that is explicative enough but I'll go over it really quickly anyway just to help you guys out a little bit. The core things you will need here are host name, which sets the name of your server, possibly password if you want your server passworded, um, password admin, which allows you to set the admin password for you to log in with, max players, which allows you to choose how many players you want there to be maximally in there, and the other really important thing is over here, message of the day, and the mission cycle, which allows you to choose what missions you want the server to cycle through. Uh, in most cases, it's only one, but, you know, that's up to you. 
all of this other stuff is pretty much explained, um, but I'm not going to go over it because it would make the video too long. Um, so, well, it's all properly explained in there, so you'll download it and you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, right, the next thing that we want to do, the final thing we want to do, is set up this run server.bat. Now, if you do not have the extensions like me, um, in order to create the bat file, you can go into a text file, go into edit, then save as, and then save it as a .bat file, and you will have a .bat file. If you do have extensions enabled, you can just rename it and call it .bat. At the end of the day, you need a bat file. It can be called anything you want. It doesn't matter what, as long as it's clear to you what you're trying to run. So now to open this file and show you the final information you will need to get your server started. Um, so here we go. First, I'm going to explain the first line and the second line. Then I'll explain the rest. Okay. Now the colon start and the go to start. Possibly very self-explanatory, but in case people don't know, um, the colon start marks that line as the start name uh, point, which you can refer to later on and go back to. And the go to start makes it go back to start. Now, as you can see, the way it's set up now, it's set up in a loop, an endless loop. This allows your server to automatically restart whenever it crashes. Now, the reason why it doesn't spam tons and tons and tons of servers is because the command in the middle between them is the command that launches the server, but it won't actually, the script will not continue until the server is actually crashed or turned off. So, you know, that'll create an auto restart, but it won't spam anything or anything like that, because that's not how it's set up. Right, now let's focus our attention on the middle line. The middle line basically states, first off, the game, that not necessarily the game, the, the program you want to launch, which is arma3server.exe, right here. As you can see, the specifics of the name don't seem to matter very much. Uh, next up, dash port 2302. Port 2302 is the default port for Arma 3, and possibly Arma 2 as well. I don't remember exactly, but it should be. Um, now... Uh, if you want to use a different port, you can do that. Just change it here, and you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Next up is the dash profiles. This is basically a direct link to the pro server profile you've just created. And so is the dash config. is a direct link to the config file we just created within that server profile. So we can change these two to whatever we want, whatever you have written down and this one to whatever you want, whatever you've written down. Do bear in mind, though, the placement of the quotation marks. You need the placement of these quotation marks in the correct place because if, like, for example, in my example here, there's a space between Curve PC and there's a space between Arma and 3. Now, if you didn't have these quotation marks, it would completely mess up because it would think that the thing we're looking for is basically an H per and it will stop because it can't find it because it stopped right there. There's a space. So the quotation marks will keep that together and keep everything working fine. So please do not forget them. So that's pretty much it. Once you've done that, you want to save the file and you just want to run it. Once you run the server.bat, it'll start your server. Everything should be fine. Now to go over to the troubleshooting. There's a couple of things that may have gone wrong. Uh, again, if you couldn't download the actual uh, server itself because it gave an error, something like uh, you do not own this content or something along those lines, log in with your actual Steam account. If you can't log in with your actual Steam account, make sure it is enabled through Steam's Steam Guard system uh, because that server or whatever may not be authorized to use your Steam account. It needs that information. Um, if it has been greenlit, no, not greenlit, uh, if it's been authorized to use your account and that all works, then you hopefully should be golden. Um, there might be an issue with the 
um, downloading of the files with the dash beta. Make sure you do the dash beta. It is necessary to add dash beta, uh, as far as I know, uh, in this case. There may also be a port forwarding issue. If you uh, start the server and you can't find it yourself, or you cannot connect with a remote device to your own server, then that means there's a port forwarding issue. Um, if you want to do the port forwarding, again, at the start of the video, there is a link to my port forwarding tutorial. Go watch that, and I'll tell you exactly how to get things rolling. Um, make sure that port, whatever port you've set up in the um, batch file is a port that you have enabled. It is uh, UDP and TCP necessary, hopefully, as well as the Steam ports that are default, which means Steam ports 27015 all the way up to 27020. If you don't have those, you may encounter some issues. Just saying, you want to have whatever port you selected and about four more of them. So you should have about five ports that you enable. So if it's the default 2302, you want to unlock the ports 2302 all the way up to 2305 or higher. You know, might be a couple more. Um, just remember that because it is necessary, else people will not be able to find your server or connect to it. Um, it's important. Um, you may also have the issue, as I stated before, you may have missed me rambling on, uh, but if your server says, oh, can't launch up to a certain point and you notice that the uh, information like with the profile, if it's looking for the profile, it says I can't find the profile because it like stops halfway through because there's a space. Again, use the quotation marks in front of dash profile and at the end of your statement, else it will go crazy. Same for the config file. If it says that error where it can't find it, make sure the quotation marks are correct and that you use the entire link, the entire address. Uh, <clears throat> I think we're out of issues. Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, that should be all of that done. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any, any other issues or whatnot, uh, feel free to contact me through the comment section. Feel free to try and contact me over Steam private message. Uh, I will try to get back to you, and if uh, if I forgot something in the tra troubleshooting, I will add it in annotations to the video, so um, let me know. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe, or share if you feel like it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.